Alright, I'm going to give a little uh, example here of a circuit, and this is going to be a power a peak detector. So uh, I'm just going to divide that in half get for my own purposes. So peak detector circuit, uh, well where are we going to store the peak voltage? It's going to be on a capacitor. Um, if we don't want that peak to be detected and get stuck forever, you have to have some way for the capacitor to discharge uh, through a resistor. And uh, then we're going to need some signal that it's going to detect the peak of. Okay, and now the problem is that as soon as that signal drops below the peak, uh, current is going to flow off the capacitor into the signal. So to prevent that, we're going to put a diode. So that's the basic idea. Um, this we'll call the diode voltage. This we'll call the capacitance and the resistance. And the challenge is going to be to find uh, the voltage on the capacitor as a function of T, given that uh, V in, which is the voltage on the input, let's just assume for now it's a capac it's a um, cosine. So, so we're going to use the method of assumed state. So just to remind you of that, you kind of make a guess what the possible states of the diode are, and then you see, uh, then you solve each of those states and you figure out where the transition is between them. So uh, for state one of the diode, we're going to use an ideal diode model. So there's another thing you have to remember that the ideal diode model, so this is a, the diode, the ideal diode model is that uh, this is going to be just a, a voltage supply with a voltage drop of 0.6 volts when the current through it is greater than zero. Uh, and the other state for it is going to be an open circuit uh, when the voltage diode drop is less than zero. So as soon as the current starts to try to tr flow it back, uh, the device opens up. And that's why this, this thing won't discharge. So. So let's deal, deal with state number one first. So in state number one, we're just going to take the, the input and we're going to replace it with uh, this voltage source. And if this is a input voltage, and now this is the, this is the diode in state one, then the voltage at this node, that's the capacitance voltage, is going to just be the input voltage minus that 0.6 volts. And so if uh, we have this uh, cosine omega t term, then uh, we'll end up with Vc is equal to V cosine omega t minus 0.6 volts. All right, so to draw that graphically, basically you'll just have, if you have uh, an input voltage like this, you can have an output voltage that's the same, just 0.6 volts lower. Now some of this is never going to be accessed because it violates the assumption of the state. The main assumption of the state is through all of this, ID has to be greater than zero. So, so now let's look at at phase two. So in phase two, or in state two, uh, the circuit is pretty easy to draw because this is just an open circuit up here. Uh, no, we know no current can flow through here. Because we're interested in VC, um, we can actually just ignore everything other than the capacitor and the resistor. Now it's a little hard to solve for this because we don't know 
what exactly the starting voltage was. So let's just assume that um, we enter phase two at uh, some time TS for T start. Okay. Uh, then the uh, this is a first order circuit, and therefore it'll follow the usual form for first order circuit. So we'll remember. Uh, first order circuit like that would be the initial voltage, so we'll draw that as VC at time TS times an exponential decay E to the minus T minus TS, so that's the amount of time that's elapsed since the start divided by the RC time constant of the circuit for decay. Alright, so this this gives us a good um, a good form, but again we don't know what TS is. And, and now if we remind ourselves, let's just sketch what that behavior is. So it's just the exponential decay from TS. So if this is TS, then it's going to be some exponential decay. Um, that's only going to be valid when VD is less than zero, or basically when this node, VC, is greater than VN. Okay? Because that's the voltage difference, right? It's VC minus VN is uh, the, sorry, V in minus VC is the voltage drop and that has to be less than zero. VD has to be less than zero for us to be in the state where the diode is back biased and therefore non-conducting. All right, so with those assumptions, we can uh, now uh, give a quick sketch of the behavior, so we'll call this the gist the general gist of the circuit uh, is that let's assume that we start out with the capacitor say uncharged and the uh, input voltage here is going through a cosine um, then well maybe that's not the best let's suppose that Vn is a oh yeah let's look from back here so it's a cosine, it's coming up, it's coming up. Now we know that if this capacitor was uncharged initially, as soon as we connect the capacitor at time t, uh, we're going to have voltage Vc. So let's put this voltage V uh, in is the green, so I'll draw that. All right, and then we'll pick this voltage blue for VC, that's that's 0.6 volts below it, and what's going to happen is at a certain point here, that voltage is going to be below uh, V in, so that the current going through it is zero. And at that moment where the current going through it is zero, we're going to see the transition because the current greater than zero has to be satisfied. So if we can solve for ID, when is ID zero? We'll know we'll, that we'll trans transition from state one to state to state two. All right. Well, that's actually um, not too hard to figure out. So the current in C is just C dV dt, and the current in R is V over R. And so the current in the diode is going to equal zero when the sum of these two currents is zero. And that's just because the um, diode voltage here, uh, the diode current here, is the sum of these two currents from Kirchhoff's law at this node. So, so if we want to know when the transition occurs from phase one to phase two, or state one to state two, I should say, I keep saying phase, I should say state, then uh, all you need to do is solve this circuit for time. Now we know that uh, Vc in this phase one is just this expression Vc minus 0.6 volts, so we can rewrite this as zero is equal to C V minus omega sine omega t um, plus V over R times 
times cosine omega t minus 0 0.6 volts. And with some uh, algebra here, you can take the, there will be a tangent over there um, and uh, some rearrangement, and you'll get, well, actually, it's a bit of a mess because of that 0 0.6 volts. Um, so then so just solve for t. So we're not going to try to finish. If that was zero, we could solve this out and get an approximate solution. It's a little harder to do, I think, in this situation. So solve for t. And at that point here, you're going to switch over to the exponential type of behavior, phase two. And then there will be a second point here where you cross this is the state that you do not realize. And then as soon now, when, when we hit here, so this point we're in phase one, this section we're in state two. Now when we hit uh, this point again, uh, the voltage now in the input is going to be bigger again uh, than the voltage at VC and suddenly it's going to start following it again. It'll go over that peak and then start decaying again, and you're going to see that repetition. So, so this is the gist of the solution. Uh, the precise solution can be obtained for when this transition occurs, can be obtained uh, for solving for this. And then you use uh, that T. So we'll call that T from 1 to 2. So that's the T1 to 2. It's a little bit of an awkward notation here, but just to be, probably don't want to use that when you're actually doing the algebra, but just uh, to be very clear here. So at that moment in time, which we've then figured out, uh, you can then go in. You know, before then you're solving, you're just following this equation, and after that you're solving this equation where this TS uh, is now that time 1 to 2. And then at this point, uh, you switch back uh, to the original behavior.